What's up, chemistry crew? Next lesson into the history of the structure of atoms, atomic structure. Okay, so let's see, recap. We are back in time, like, what is this, over 100 years ago. And at this point, people knew that everything probably was made of really tiny little particles that can mix. Uh, combine together or break apart from each other, and that's what causes chemical reactions, and that's what makes up everything. We're all chemicals, right? So we know chemicals are probably made of tiny little bits. Cool. The problem is people thought that this is what atoms were, just like tiny little dot. Well, that could be true, but how do you know that? So now this brings us to, in 1897, Joseph John Thompson, he was a uh, scientist, and he came up with something called a cathode ray tube experiment. So what is a cathode ray tube? So first, you've actually, we'll get to this more in a minute, but you've actually seen them before. The old school TV sets that had the really big back part, not the flat screen, uh, you know, not the flat screens that we have now, which everything I'm looking at that I'm using right now is a flat screen, my laptop here, my cell phone screen, these are flat screens. But there were these old rounded screens, and they made a lot of electrical noise when you turned them on. And when you would get near them after they've been on for a while, you felt some like, like some static electricity. Well, this is a cathode ray tube. So let's talk about what that is. So inside of the old TV sets, you have a tube of glass, okay? There's very little to almost no air in it, like empty space, like outer space. All right, and then you have at one end you have, and this is very simple, it's a little bit more complicated than this, but basically what you have is uh, a piece of metal at the back called the cathode, and it gets electricity, and it starts to get very hot. And over here you have another piece of metal that has a positive charge called the anode. So the cathode has a negative charge, and the anode has a positive. Don't forget electricity and magnetism if you've paid attention to the previous lessons. You know how magnets have a north and a south? Well, that's really positive and negative. Electricity and magnetism are the same thing. And now we know that opposites attract, right? Negatives want to go to positives. Positives want to go towards negatives. But positives push away from positives, and negatives push away from negatives, right? Okay, so we got this em almost completely empty tube, a piece of metal called the cathode that gets electricity, and it starts to get very hot. Well, what starts to happen is little somethings start flying off this piece of metal towards the positive one. And if there's a little hole there, what, what happens is some of these little particles can get through the hole and they eventually end up hitting a screen that has a phosphor coating. You know what phosphor coatings are. They're what make um, fluorescent light bulbs glow. They're glow in the dark stickers. So basically when these little particles hit this glass that has a phosphor coating, it glows. And this is actually how you got the very first television sets. The front of the screen uh, glows. Okay, so let's read about this experiment a little bit more. In 1897, Joseph John Thompson measured the mass of cathode rays, which a ray is anything that comes shooting out of something, uh, showing that they were made of particles, but they were, what, 1,800 times lighter than the lightest atom known? Okay, these things are stupid stupidly small. And think about, we're talking about atoms, which are already stupidly small. So whatever these things coming off the cathode are, are e even more small. It's crazy. Okay. So these tiny little bits were clearly not atoms. They were way too small, but they're a new particle. So he discovered the first subatomic particle, which he already, already uh, originally called corpuscles, but <laughs> I like this name better. They're called electrons now, and that's where the word, uh, well, they're called electrons because we found out that's what causes electricity. Um, and he named them electrons after particles postulated, meaning thought of, by the scientist George Johnstone, uh, Johnstone Stoney, huh, man, some name, uh, before him in 1874, so a couple years before he did this experiment. He also showed that these cathode rays, which we now call electrons, and yes, they are what cause electricity, now we know that. So if you're asking, people used electricity before we knew what it was? Yes. Yeah. People used electricity before they knew what electrons were. All right. Uh, that happens a lot in science. There's a bunch of like medications we use. We're not really sure how they work, but they work. Or, you know, like whatever. All right. He showed 
that these cathode rays were identical with particles given off by photoelectric, we'll learn about that more soon, and radioactive materials. So basically, he realized that electrons are these really small things inside of already really small atoms. Uh, it was quickly recognized that electrons, they, are the particles that carry electric currents in metal wires and carry the negative electric charge of the atom. So basically, this experiment discovered electrons. Uh, people knew about electricity. They didn't know that um, electricity was actually the movement of these stupidly small little particles inside of atoms called electrons. By the way, you know how a submarine is a boat that goes underwater, right? Mare is uh, ocean in Spanish. So submarine means below the ocean. Well, look at this word for electrons. They're called subatomic. That means below an atom, smaller than an atom. Okay? So basically a cathode ray tube. This is how we get our old, the original TV sets. Uh, again, it's a tube with very little air in it. A piece of metal at one end gets heated using electricity and some stuff was jumping off of it. And if something goes from the negative and gets attracted to the positive, what gets attracted to positive? Opposites attract. If something gets attracted to positive, it's negative. We know electrons are negatively charged, okay? Um, yeah, and when these electrons hit this glass screen coated with glow-in-the-dark phosphorus, that's it. That's how you get an old-school TV set. So here is a video of a cathode ray tube uh, in action. This is a cathode ray tube. Inside, I there's nothing. This on your own. Uh, inside, basically, it's actually a vacuum tube. There's the cathode ray tube. Uh, so there's and nothing but a vacuum on the inside. Where it gets uh, and it's called a cathode oh. ray tube. So that you looks see like a beam, a beam of across. light, maybe a laser. You might think it's light, you try it but when you take a magnet to light, you bring a magnet it near light, this. light does not move. You can see that it's bending magnet. or deflecting this away from the magnet. This stuff is getting so we know that it's not actually by a magnet. Um, if something gets light. moved by a magnet, it's what not JJ light. What J.J. Thompson summarized light was that he was no seeing a piece charge. of an atom Zero. flying from one end of the cathode ray tube to the other. Magnet, that means that and it's either positive the piece of the atom that he was seeing was negative charge. based on the, the end of the magnet that, that gets moved by a magnet was causing a an repulsion. It turns out that so electrons the are negative repulsion, therefore the particles must be negative. That's the cathode ray tube. There is a simulator that I encourage you to play with. I'm not going to mess with it here. You just have to turn on and if you notice you have a positively charged piece of metal plate and a negatively charged piece of metal plate and if you think about the actual electrons right you know something's negative if it gets attracted towards positive so there's a cool simulator if you click that link oops all right and there's a video i want you to watch also that's uh really cool so um yeah read through this when you get a chance but um these old tv sets with really big backsides those are cathode ray tubes and again i'm not gonna uh, watch hello there this my now. name is gavin time Welcome but this is a really cool video that shows oddly presented from uh, my living room in extremely slow motion they have a very all the way down uh, to 2500 awesome frames camera. a second you can now and it actually shows individual frame the beam of electrons hitting the front of the screen and it, yeah, if you watch it in slow motion, you can actually see it the electrons hit the screen one layer at a time. Frame it happens so fast that we're just playing a but video game or watching TV, and we just each line don't notice this. It happens so right. quickly. Slow That's actually what's happening. The electrons are getting swept second, across the screen and making it glow. So, yep, if you had an old school TV set, it's actually an electron gun. Okay, so to wrap this up, at this point in time, Thanks to J.J. Thompson, we know that atoms are made of even tinier little negative things called electrons. The problem is, that's all people thought at the time. They thought electrons were these tiny little negative bits stuck into wherever in the atom. And these guys called it the plum pudding model. We would have called it the like chocolate chip model. Okay. Um, so basically, by 1904, we knew that electrons were in atoms that basically an atom had positive charges to balance out the negative electrons, making an atom overall neutral, meaning zero. All the positives and negatives add up. Um, and so this is what they thought. They thought that an atom was basically positive with a bunch of negative electrons stuck in like chocolate chips. We would have called it the chocolate chip model. He called it the plum pudding model. And that's it. And basically, if you run an experiment by 
let's say, if you were to shoot positive alpha particle radiation at, at an object, like a thin piece of metal, the positive alpha particles would go right through the atom completely because there's just a bunch of negative electrons spread out all over the place in this plum pudding or chocolate chip model of the atom. And these positive alpha particles would just go right through an atom. Okay, so that's what we would see if an atom was actually structured like this, like a plum pudding with plums stuck in it or chocolate chips with electrons just stuck all over the place. Okay, that's basically it. So this is what we would see if you did an experiment where you had like a thin piece of metal like gold or aluminum foil and you shot positively charged alpha particles. The, uh, alpha particles were a type of radiation known at the time and they're positively charged and really tiny. That's all you have to know. And this is what would happen. The radiation would go right through the atom. Okay, I'm going to pause there. So that basically sums up the discovery of electrons using the cathode ray tube experiment. And what would happen in an experiment with positive alpha particles getting shot at a sample of atoms, if atoms really were structured like this, which is called the plum pudding model. All right, let's stop there.